Uh, okay, so uh, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, Aether A's defense and how, how that all went and whatnot. Um, uh, but it's, it's a little interesting today because it's not the same defense I had last week. So last week was um, Anima Season. This week is Dark Season. Um, I do intend on running the same defense for both seasons eventually. Uh, but I still had some experimentation to do with the um, my Anima Season team. Uh, or just that team in general. So I'm going to experiment with it more on Anima Season. Uh, and then kind of finalize it there before I move it over here because then you move it over here You have to kind of like re-bless everybody and then re-bless them back and forth for anima and dark and all that stuff. So I'll, I'm gonna leave this one here, especially like as a what's the word like a sort of control type thing as like a This is what I'm gonna use to as like a basis of comparison because like I, the idea is like as long as it does better than what this team is right I mean, that's what you want. You want to like You don't want to make a worse team, right? I mean, that's ultimately what we don't want to do um so yeah, so today we're gonna go over. Uh, the, this is the old defense I had. It was it was basically mirrored uh, in the it was basically mirrored in my um, in, in on both sides uh, except for you know uh, certain um, anima or astra hero or anima or dark mythics whatever is on defense defense mythics and all that. Um, but yeah, so you know and today's also the server reset. So I'm gonna uh, video film the uh, Aether raids offense later. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll be able to make it, uh, but we'll calculate that later. But let's go take a look here. No, not rank. Defense. Uh, so I actually got knocked down. So I, like I, I always mention, um, I usually tend to be in these top two. Uh, even with the uh, losses last season, I think I was in these top two. Ideally, I want to be here, but uh, if I fall down to here, it's not so bad. And, and this is like what a poor performance looks like is, is being this far down. Um, so yeah, let's go take a look at how my defense ended up doing. Defense results. Uh, and this is this is partially to do with uh, I have less Astra or less Dark Mythics on my defense. I only have Sothis. I'll have Sothis on here. On here, the other one has uh, both Duma and Mirabilis. Um, yeah, so I, I lose a lot less lift when I end up losing. And here, I, uh, there's not as much of a cushion. Um, what else? Yeah, I guess that's it, man. Let's, let's just get in here, uh, take a look at what um, what went wrong, what I'm trying to rectify with my other team, if, if it might be able to solve some of this stuff. This one might might be a little shorter than the, the first one, because, like, you know, I've talked about a few things. I'll try not to repeat so much um, going forward from these. Um, of course, whether I repeat stuff or not kind of depends on the game, and, and this is a situation where it is sort of... It's out of my control because, uh, as you can see here, Bike is once again um, reappearing here. Uh, and this comes from just anything, right? Like the fact that I don't have much of a Bike counter on my team. Um, because, like, even this guy, uh, I think he, he got a success on my team. Uh, and he doesn't even have, like, a merged Bike. It's not even, like, a plus one or anything. Uh, so for those of you out there who are looking at uh, learning... I mean, this is also, like, partially giving people some information about... Uh, the flyer ball and, and and what comes along with it and how it performs and, and what you might want to patch up uh, but it's also like you know why not learn from uh, people on offense as well like learn what attacks me how they attack me uh, for you on offense you know what you want to how, how exactly you want to take apart uh, this team uh, this team or other flyer balls like it uh, but again like I said this one's a little weaker uh, certain elements are the same I'm missing a few things though uh, but yeah, so let's take a look here. See where this, uh, see how this ends up playing out. Uh, let's see, we got this ouch pouch is very interesting. Uh, let's push play here. Uh, yeah, so this is basically this team isn't very like I said, this team isn't very strong, period. But in terms of like how to make it even easier, is standing right here is usually a good thing because she will come all the way. She will come all the way down here. It's kind of the 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 same problem that the the, my other flyer ball has is like standing here uh, but in this case it's like one further down which makes you even safer because you can kind of just chill down here and she gets out of position and then everybody else just kind of falls apart so that's basically what ends up happening uh, and I do no damage of course uh, in this case he didn't even need a uh, distant counter on him that's interesting that uh, the, the flyer ball ended up being so intact
Uh, of course, no damage. Oh no, I did. I do do much. I do do some damage. Okay, one, and then get it back. This is actually this Camilla is like really a lot weaker. Um, I think she's like plus six or something here. Uh, so I got to sneak around. Basically, surviving is a big deal here because like a lot of people have flyer formations and all that stuff. So like getting to sneak around and, and maybe snipe people. This is basically kind of what you're aiming for in a, in a team like this. Of course, Bike uh, is the easiest target, so they all just kind of funnel into him, which, you know. It's kind of interesting that people run uh, Lancina with him. Well, not always interesting. Uh, a lot of times it's pretty basic, um, but like this guy in particular has uh, Steady Breath, so I'm not sure what the Lancina's here to do. Um, but yeah. So let's see. Oh, I feel like I should probably turn off animations for this. Let's go see. So I'll have to remember to leave them on for uh, offense, but uh, I think we can drop them for defense, considering we have so many defenses to go through. Uh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is kind of drawn out. Um, just I just want to see, make sure um, whatever I said happens happens. Uh, and then the added turn from um, was it Mila? What's her name? Called Mila, yep. Uh, a lot of people think it's like earth shatteringly broken, but I mean, it's not really that big a deal. Um, if they can beat you in eight, they probably could have beat you in seven. Um, yeah, I mean, most most of these, most Aether Raids maps, like for those of you maybe less experienced, most Aether Raids maps, like, they're, they're decided in the first few turns. So the fact that you get one extra turn at the end isn't really a big deal. I mean, there's like every so often you'll, you'll get one, and I'm sure, you know, most of us. Um, like even Acris, the great Acris himself, uh, there'll be times where, you know, I'm sure it comes from where it's like, oh, one more turn and I could have, you know, maybe got that pot or, you know, maybe could it have, it could have ended up better. Maybe I could have avoided a situation where, uh, a risky situation that ended up costing me more than I wanted to. Um, it happens sometimes, but, uh, it's not that big a deal. Um, uh, you know, uh, so that one was pretty obvious. I lost this one. Lift loss control got me there. We have a success up here. So let's, but let's take a look at what happened here first. Uh, to barn, I, obviously I didn't think to barn was here, but like to barn the new colorless to barn with dive bomb. It looks like an interesting, um, what's the word? Like an interesting aspect, a new, interesting new introduction, um, to the gale force comp. Uh, do I think he's going to be like, the problem is with Gale Force is you're kind of banking on PVEing, right? Like you're here to do as much as you can in your turn, so that's when it's their turn, they're crippled, and um, you basically made out on top. Uh, so you, you're playing the game without having to worry about um, having to play the game essentially. Uh, so you do everything on your turn, and then by their turn, uh, they're so crippled that like you're basically just free to roam and do whatever you want. Um, so in that sense, I mean that's kind of what Gale Forcers want to do, um, and there's there's a lot of Gale Forcers that can do it, and they do it in different ways and and, and things like that. Um, and that's all fine. That's all well and good. But I think um, when you have to ask yourself what the Gale Force is trying to achieve, um, Legendary Leaf just does that probably better than anyone else. He's got an, he's got immense damage. He can take multiple turns. Um, yeah, I mean, especially with uh, Light Season, you can run two Dancers plus whatever other supports you want to run because you can run two Peonies if you want. Um, so yeah, that's... Uh, not to mention, they also help patch up his speed, which, I mean, you're not going to be quadding people very often. I don't know if... A, I don't even know if the bolt lets you quad. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but he's got low speed, right? And you can kind of patch that up, so like, you know, help guarantee certain kills better than, than, than normal. Um, you're never going to make him fast, but... Um, Certainly, you know, you wouldn't mind some extra speed, the possibility of a quad. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's 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 this week. Or that's this this team here is not what um, the other one. But it, it seems to, it's probably going to follow the same pattern of like, of the bike team. Just have, um, just have uh, Chaos Ike here instead. Uh, let's go see, let me go... Uh, Quiet this thing down. Uh, 
Uh, let's see here. So they're just taking their time, breaking everything down. A lot of times you don't really need to like... Um, I, I just muted you. I don't know why. Okay, I don't know what that was about. Um, but yeah, so as you can see here, um, Fallen Bike, Fallen Ike is a uh, very strong unit. Uh, could I have uh, solved this? Would this would this have been so easy on uh, my other team? Maybe uh, that that lantern position or this uh, this position here uh, is moved for that specific reason because uh, I realized that people could just um, like stand here, bait some people out, like with a good because like you can bait out her and she doesn't do a whole lot of damage unless you're fighting a tank but um, I haven't been running into very many tank teams uh, armor teams or whatever um, and then you have like these these people won't get baited down here um, but yeah so I mean I feel like maybe uh, what's it called my other team would have done a lot better uh, in this scenario so I don't think I would have lost to this one necessarily um, just because nothing, nothing interesting happened here, right? Uh, he just he just moved uh, Ike around, and Ike is like a worse bike, I think. Anyway, he's decent, but uh, I, I do think bike's immortality basically makes him a lot more useful. Uh, so we lost these two, fairly predictable. I think um, this one, this one, like I said, the other team couldn't probably can't handle this because uh, it's bike. But I think with some with some changes, maybe choose your legends for some flying unit comes out that's decent for uh, bite killing or something like that. Um, you know, so so that's yet to be determined. Uh, this one I probably would have had an easier time uh, despite having two greens on my team, uh, just because Pala would have been would have had better positioning I think. Uh, so we won here. Let's see what happened. Um, usually end up losing. Yeah. So like this here looks like there's no real strategy or anything going on here. The bonus units here for. Seemingly the sake of being a bonus unit, she's here, uh, second dancer. It's interesting that people run a second dancer. Um, when So he put two in here, or he or she put two peonies in here. They're missing a second uh, light unit. So you'd, you'd think instead of running Azura, you just run a plus one peony and then another peony. Uh, but that's not the case. So this person... Like, just by looking at, like, what's going on down here, you can kind of see this person's not very experienced. Um, or maybe they just don't care about uh, what what's going on. Uh, so, witchy wand here, I think that's what she has. No, it's just not, that's not that one, that's a different one. Uh, what she have? A rar blade. This is a very interesting build. So, yeah, I mean, you can kind of, this seems pretty predictable as to why this turned out the way it did. Um, so, as you can see... Uh, with this team and a lot of other teams, uh, you end up winning not out of like team uh, build construction or anything, anything like that. You kind of just sort of end up winning because uh, you end up winning because like you fight against people who weren't really prepared, and this person just left after this. So I mean, they didn't have any more dances left, and this person couldn't have like repositioned her. Uh, Excalibur. I wanted to make a, a, a Nino, but uh, I don't have, I didn't have the resources or time or like just anything. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> they had way too many flyers on this team and that's kind of part of what Loki's here to do is to deter the flyers, but yeah, I don't know why, like their positioning got kind of wonky over here and I guess they just got kind of stuck here. You could have just put her there and then danced her off or something. Um, but yeah, so that's that. That one sort of ended before it really started, so let's take a look at this one. So two foes were defeated here, and they just ended up quitting. Um, let's see what's going on here. So it looks to me like maybe New Year's Alphonse is the strategy here. Wind sweep. Uh, dude, I need a wind sweep for Byleth. I don't have Byleth either, but. Uh, when I get her, I'm going to need that wind sweep. Oh, I guess, like, um, what's the word? Okay, so let's see. So they hit the trap. They obviously got healed. I don't know. Let's go see what that does. What does this do? 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, that's fine, I guess. Uh, it does make him unbelievably like stronger to have his uh, special ability up, which is kind of irritating, but that's what it is. Hmm. Okay. So you took that. We took that one. So basically, the only times I've won are off of, or not, or not, not necessarily won, but like helped or done, basically done anything was um, Micaiah hitting uh, that person there, and then uh, earlier in the week I fought that other person who Micaiah also sniped their peony. Um, I think he might die to he might die to Camilla here. Yeah. Or no, no. Oh, okay. Very interesting. And then he dies here, I think. Oh no. It's interesting. Uh, I think around here he probably gives up somewhere. Yeah, it's not really worth it. Uh, so that one was one kind of with uh, leaning heavily on the the New Year's Alphonse, and I think my green heavy team probably would have dissuaded that. Um, but it's important to realize, right, to a lot of you out there, uh, when you're at the higher levels, and I'm not saying I'm like the super high levels, but like if you want to get higher level, which, you know, you'd have to remember that you're like talking about being better than me, right, and, and hopefully we all sort of... I mean, I'd like to be better than me tomorrow, right? Or, or week after week is be better. Uh, but anyway, the point being that when you're trying to get to higher levels, which, like I said, is is at least where I'm at and higher, right? Just because, like, if you look and you see that you you may have lost to something or you may have beat something, a team does not mean that that was that would have been a a victory. Let's see, which one on here? Which one? Wait, which one was I at here? This one here. Uh, like for me, right? So it's like I can consider like having two different teams and having like, you know, your theory crafting. It's like, oh, I need to improve this. I need to improve that. I need to improve this other stuff. You know, that theory crafting is important. But a lot of times you have to realize that in the higher tiers, uh, people have multiple strategies and multiple teams ready. Like if you guys see my AR offense stuff, I always use the same thing. It's just a bunch of variations of my um, bulky CC count, uh, CC vantage strat. Or uh, my Astra team is just, I mean, there's not even multiple different versions. It's, it's just the um, the Felicia one. So someone, me, who's on like the lower end of what you might consider the higher tiers, um, my, you know, my strategy, my, um, my roster is kind of limited. But like I said, if you're trying to break into higher tiers, I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, oh, you know, let's, you have to, you should really assume that everyone up there has all the strategies forever uh, to counter everything. Not necessarily. Um, but it's always important to realize that they, they're going to have more than one, um, more than one type of team, more than one type of approach. Uh, and, and the idea that like, oh, if I had uh, this thing here, it would have solved that or I wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, those are rarely ever going to be, um, that's rarely ever going to be true because like I said, they're going to have, uh, multiple teams, multiple ways to approach you. And if you lost to this, like I lost to that, or I, lost, I beat that team there, uh, out of you know maybe some mistakes were made or whatnot but like that's only because of what was encouraged what he was encouraged to bring if maybe i had my other green team he would have probably brought a different team and maybe rng would have been uh, more in his favor in that sense and maybe he would have won that uh, but yeah so that's that's basically the the main thing i want to stress there is the idea that like when you're thinking about improving or when you're thinking about uh changing changing stuff on your on your uh like defense teams or or you know you're comparing two different two different defense teams like i am now or you're comparing yours to mine and things like that it's important to realize that it's really hard to do that because of how many options people actually have in this game um, which is you know it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing like it's a good thing when you're playing right that you have a lot of these um ways to play the game and it's kind of annoying to have to like 
to face them all, right? Because you can't really account for everything. So you're, there are certain losses you're probably going to just have to take, and, and it's about sort of reducing chances of being beaten, basically. Because it's never... The chances of being beaten are never zero, right? So our job is to minimize it, basically. Uh, so let's take a look here. Replay. I got one defeat, uh, but I still failed. Uh, wait, did we see this one already? Oh, no, no, we didn't. Okay. Uh, so the strat here, I guess, is Alm, even though he's not merged. I mean, they have a second bolt tower. Man, speaking of bolt towers, that, uh... A new update basically made Aether Raids almost a joke, which is, I'm glad that I got my chair before that update came in. Um, and it was already turning, sort of turning bad before that update um, came about, but uh, I think now more than ever, it's it's really starting to become less prestigious to have the red chair as well as be in tier 27. Because, I mean, as time goes on, people are going to be reaching tier 27 out of a mere... Uh, fact that like they're gonna have more merges on their light and astro mythics so you can get more score uh, so people are just gonna move up in general um will more tiers solve that i don't know um yet to be seen uh but additionally like the new update just kind of made things uh there's a lot of convenience factors being made for people to play so we have five escape ladders now which the moment the escape ladder was brought in was already kind of like, well, that's kind of a joke. Um, and then now, not only that, but the uh, the bolt tower can be boosted to deal 40 damage. And as you can see, uh, there are only, you know, one unit that's above 50. And, you know, if you look at my other ones, they're also all very, very low in terms of, or not super low, but like 40 damage basically means that everybody is now in one shot potential even if it's not one hp they're all in one shot potential so i mean for one for those of you for those of us anyway i have mine uh, for those of us who have uh who thought it would be a good idea to invest in uh cronia it, it looks like um those are paying off in in massive dividends i'd say um but yeah so anyway that's sort of rambling on about that stuff but yeah so Hmm. Okay, so this looks this looks uh, fairly standard. Just pop everything. Okay, so let's see what their uh, plan is. I, oh, okay, so I guess it, yeah, it was the alm, uh, and then probably they're just gonna activate the uh, what's his name, the Hector down here at some point. Uh, I think that's Hector. No. Yeah, it should be Hector, right? Who are you? Yeah, you're Hector. <laughs> Hector has like so many alts, it's like ridiculous. He's got an axe version, he's got a sword version now. He's got, well, he's got like two different axe versions. He's, no, I think he does. And he's got like a, a lance version, it's very interesting. Uh, so she died there, he died there. Oof. Okay. So okay, yeah, so she danced him out of the way. Yeah, this is basically uh, easy to see where this is going from here. Uh, fortunately, they didn't take the second aether pot, um, so that's good. It's got vantage. Uh, we can kind of see where this is going from here. Um, so yeah, that one kind of was again merely from like positioning. Uh, the problem with having Loki there or Boki there is. She's too easily baited out and too far. Like, at least when, in my other team, when Camilla's there, she gets baited out, but, like, it's, a, it's, it's, you're, she's still closer than Boki does, than Boki gets when she gets baited out. Um, so there's, like, a little bit of time it takes to, to retreat and all that stuff. Uh, so let's take a look at what happened here. Uh, so this team looks kind of interesting. Um, Byleth with the wind sweep. Very good. Uh, I think I would have gone... Well, my Byleth is on defense, so I run her with attack speed bond. Um, but yeah, you probably want, like, death blow or something on the other side. Especially, like, e even... E well, even on the defense, without the attack speed uh, thing, maybe death blow would probably be better. Just because she's got, like, you know, as you can see here, she's got so much speed, it's ridiculous anyway. 
uh, 51 plus like the seven she gets from here and then if you're adding the bond that's another five um, so speed's not wholly that uh, useful uh, on her once you, you know you're over capping on speed basically is what uh, the point is there uh, but yeah so what is going on here so plus 10 distant counter vantage special spiral Uh, oath for some reason and quicken pulse. So right now he's at a one charge and he's probably gonna activate this which if he activates this it's gonna be very curious to me. Yeah I don't I don't really understand. I guess it's like just to boost him period on uh, him over here. So yeah let's just go see. I mean I assume it's just going to be this. Yeah exactly what I thought it was gonna be. Um, let's take a look and see what happens. Uh, counter and I got outsped. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, that's one of the things with the flyer ball that's inherent to its, like, design. Um, we don't have calves. So, there are certain comps, like, I'm sure you've all run into them, where there's certain comps where sitting there, just leaving a unit here and baiting isn't always useful, right? Because they'll have, like, some really hardcore threats. So maybe they'll have, like, a, a Bramimond here or there somewhere. They'll have, like, um... Uh, damn, they just ditched Camilla down there to die. Um, but they'll have, like, various threats like Reinhardt and, all, and Ophelia and all that stuff. So you can't really bait because of these these uh, high-pressure units just sitting here. But with the Flyer Ball, that's one of the easiest strategies to get around it, right? You just sit there and bait because... The flyer ball's greatest strength is the fact that they are, in fact, a flyer ball. They just kind of stick together. Um, while, like I said, while it's hard, like, this this team right here is especially prone to it uh, just because, um, this team here specifically is prone to it just because I have the Boki up front, so she can, you know, she gets out of position a lot easier than Camilla does. Uh, but in general, I think as we saw, if you're not really... Uh, keeping an eye on your um, your Camilla or your anchor position there, they can get baited out anyway. Not as not as bad, mind you. Like I said, but they, it, it can happen. So that's going to be one of your uh, easiest ways to to counter a flyer ball is baiting. Uh, let's take a look at this one here. Um, yeah. So this is on. This is again. So here we go. It's another bike. Uh, this one is plus three merged QR. No C disrupt, uh, and that that was the other one. I, for, I had forgotten about that one. But the um, what's her name? The the cab Veronica. Especially she's getting refined, which makes me uh, shudder to think what kind of refine um, Veronica could get. Like especially after you know bikes refine and like Lancina's refine. Uh. I mean, we're heading into scary times, basically. And I think... Like, partially, to me, it's like... This... I'll see there, I get level 5 five times. It's already in a full effect. Um, but basically, to me, the escape ladder just seems like a really band-aid solution. Like... we can They can start introducing more interest... More, like... I'm not gonna say overpowered again, but, like, uh, more... Just, just stronger things in general. Um, and then, you know, as you're facing these things, you can just escape ladder one more time. Um, it kind of reminds me of, like, League of Legends or, or, or Paladins or, you know, Smite. I don't watch a whole lot of League of Legends, but I watch Smite and Paladins a lot. Um, the, the picks and bans, while, I, I mean, that's probably one of my favorite parts to watch in Smite and Paladins. <laughs> Uh, boringly enough, is watching the picks and bands and see how the teams are constructed constructed around each other. Um, and I just I just like watching that. I have no idea why, but um, oof. Oh, did he? Wait a minute. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so like I said, that's one of my favorite parts to watch. But I think to a large degree, the um, the ban. The banning portion, while it has, it's inter like I said, it's interesting to watch, and I wouldn't want to watch it without it. Uh, but I think the ban portion ends up being very band-aidy for uh, hero balancing. 
Uh, I think no matter what MOBA you're playing or what uh, hero shooter you're playing, there'll be people complaining about uh, overpowered units and stuff like that always. Um, and I think that while necessary, I do think that it is a sort of a band-aid solution because it's like you can't complain about a character being broken if you never see him in the SPL or you know in the pro leagues or whatever. It's like, of course, you know you always point out like, oh well, they're banned because they're broken, and you can kind of point that out a lot, right? Uh, but let's go take a look at this victory I had here, which is kind of weird. Um, Annette. So I'm assuming Annette. What's her name? No, Hilda. I don't know. Who's Annette? I forgot who Annette was. Uh, she has the... Okay, I don't know. I have no idea what's going on here. Um, it's an interesting uh, go-to, I guess. Uh, but yeah, like I said, while I think the ban and pick phase is, is necessary, I, I do think it's interesting... Uh, mainly just because like it's hard to point out a character's strength now every so often they get through and then you know we all get we all get to see it but it's kind of an easy way to quell like people's complaints of it because imagine having to see a, a really broken character in every single game you play that would obviously get you more vocal as to you know the nature of the character's balancing status or state state of balance um that would also that that would obviously get you more like riled up and more like uh, interested in 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 getting something done about this than um, if you you know you don't see it that often. So out of sight, out of mind. I think that's kind of what the ban phase kind of does a little bit. Is like you can ban it, so people end up being less vocal about it, and it's just sort of a way to uh, appease people. Um, my I I think so anyway. Uh, I guess back to this before you know, it, it kind of ends. Um, it's kind of obvious what happened here. This is why I, I decided not to like stop and start talking about it. It's because um, this team didn't have a strategy going in. There was no like... They just kind of went in here and threw some units at it and see what would happen. And uh, obviously nothing good, very, nothing very good happened. Um, yeah. So there's that. Uh, we won this one, so let's take a look. So we've got two left. <gasps> uh, so replay, lift lost control. So this was today. So I got the success here, and then it got me here. So that's pretty nice. Um, start replay. I did wonder how. I really feel like, given all the things that are making it uh, easier for you to get points on, uh, in offense. I wonder if. The solution, a, well not the solution, but a solution might be to like reduce lift loss or increase lift loss or no, what is it? Reduce the lift loss control thing, right? So right now, uh, basically the first time you get attacked every single day is going to be the one that counts. Uh, everything after that, there's like a guard that makes it so you can't like, you don't just lose too many points. Um... But I think the fact that like matchmaking is random, so you can't just like farm one person individually, um, and all these, like I said, all these things that are making it for people to get points on offense easier. I really think that maybe making it so that two of your attacks, like if you get hit twice and you lose both times, I feel like maybe letting that uh, take lift both times um, might be an interesting solution um, to the problem. Granted, it'd be a really irritating one because it's kind of like reducing, like you're doing all this work on on offense, and even like I said, even though it's easier work, ooh, this is very interesting. You can see a Cronia in action. This is the first time I've seen a Cronia uh, in action here. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, um, sure, like I said, factually, AR offense is getting easier, but like moment to moment and like week to week. You don't really feel it getting easier because you're, you're you're always playing, you're always doing your best, um, and to see that work that you're doing just get kind of like derailed by the fact that like you're getting you're losing you're going to be losing you know basically twice as much on on defense now. Um, I think is a reason to be cautious about that, or, or a reason why maybe they're not uh, going to do that. Um, that's just a thought. Um, like I said. It would make it like m what I'm looking at here is for one, it would make Aether Aid's defenses more, a lot, well, not more important, but like a lot more important now because while they're important now, like I said, the lift loss control thing uh, kind of makes it like 
50 50 in terms of relevance considering it's like oh you're just gonna get attacked once and half the time people like you take out one unit like your team just has to take out one unit and then people will just leave right um because there's no real reason to to not stay to, not, to, to stay there in that in that match after you've lost so much lift on uh one one character death um but anyway i don't know that's just a, that's just what i what i was thinking uh, in that sense uh, but yeah, so let's let's take a look at this Cronia. I'm, I'm actually kind of excited. I want to see what a what a fully built Cronia looks like um, in action. Um, mine mine is plus eight. I can get the plus ten on her, but uh, I'm kind of lazy just because I don't have close counter or special spiral, which is kind of necessary on her. Um, but yeah, I mean the close counter obviously is very necessary. The special spiral is nice to have. Uh, whether it's necessary is you know will be up to you. Um, and then, yeah, you gotta take out the healing tower and your golden at that point. Yep. So that's exactly how you play this. Um, I've been thinking, I think, I've been thinking about putting, like, this right here, and then leaving, I think this is the trap right now, uh, leaving this trap here, but basically, given now that this deals 40 damage, um, the healing tower is gonna be, you know, basically more important than ever uh, so defending it is going to be you know one of your top priorities basically uh, when defense building uh, <laughs> wow uh, so that didn't that didn't go very well for uh, this person here uh, the problem came down to uh, she I did a pretty decent job of, of defending it because I put it here and she had to waste her attack on this, which means that she couldn't, she wasn't savage blowing her. So if she had dropped her down, because she probably would have hit her, uh, killed her, dropped everybody else down by seven more. Uh, so she would have been at 10. But not only that, um, hitting her would have boosted her, uh, her, charged her special a little bit more, right? Um, which. While it, it's a two cooldown special, so she would have hit her brought down to one, and then we still would be in the situation here. Um, she should have charged the special, so I would not have survived a Cronia Glimmer after having been Savage Blowed once. Um, but yeah, so that, that's something to consider. Uh, also, like I think, you know, as we've seen on the other one, I've changed this to Hardy Bearing, which should help me there too. Um, yeah, so. Basically, I think Lycronia is one of the biggest concerns for me. It was one of the biggest concerns after, you know, several weeks. This is the first time I've ever uh, ran into a Cronia offense. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, either maybe I'm doing a good enough job of covering my bases in terms of the Cronia offense. Or they're just not as common as I was. I led myself to believe, basically. Um, but, yeah. So... I think it says we still lose. I think it says we still lost here. I'm not sure. So he can do that again because he's got the duos, whatever. Right, so it looks like we still lose here. Uh, based off the fact that, like, we're also low. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate that the bots can't seem to, like. The AI can't seem to think a couple steps ahead because I, ideally like if I was in that situation right I probably would have put like Camilla here and then had um, what's her name uh, Pala like teleport here and then just like quad him to death or something but you know it is what it is uh, yep so that's that and again at least they didn't take the uh, pots in that, sense, in that case And the last one. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so that one, that last one, I mean, it probably would have been handled just as the same uh, with my my other team. Uh, yeah, I mean, it probably would have been handled just equally as effectively with my other team. Um, again, like... They could have. I could have won that one off of the fact that they looked at my team and thought maybe Cronia would have been good. The other team might have dissuaded Cronia and then brought something else, and maybe RNG would have tipped over for them a little bit, and then maybe they would have uh, been more successful. 
I mean, they ended up winning anyway, but uh, obviously, you know, taking two losses like that is a huge loss in lift. Um, but yeah, so let's see what's going on here. Um, looks like a budget leaf kind of thing going on here, maybe. Let's see. Mila is kind of interesting on defense, on offense. Because, uh, you know, Mila is going to be here now, so we all have to, like, you know, work around it. Uh, we'll see, oh, let's see, oh, I forgot about this Fallen Ike here. Let's see what this Fallen Ike is going on with him. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, just a basic Fallen Ike. Um, oops, pardon. Uh, let's go see, so he'll take this out. Yeah. Also, yeah, the, problematically, this one does not have flyer formation on her. Oh, that, that's... Okay, so yeah, I wonder... That makes me wonder now if uh, that situation I mentioned before was not because uh, the AI wasn't smart enough, was because she doesn't have flyer formation. Um, so yeah, this, that does seem kind of interesting now. Um, Leanne is kind of interesting. You really do want a dancer, but the fact that, like, Mila's here and she's targeting defense, right? Defense, yeah, defenseless. So she targets defense. Um, there are dancers you can run that can out def that. Well, maybe I don't know about 100% out defense Mila, but you know you could probably get close enough to de out defense uh, some Milas. But as people start getting more merges on them, it's going to be harder and harder. Uh, especially like I'm not sure why. Yeah, I guess there's no like. So if you're going to be sitting here with Mila, just sniping the dancers. Um, I really don't know why you wouldn't run like a fortress res defense or a um, what's the other one or just like a fortress defense or anything that'll give her more defense like visible defense um, yeah it's very interesting to me that like you would have her for that role specifically and then not maximize her for that role because like especially this Mila like some people like to like hybridize right like oh maybe we can put like you know more interesting build on her and then have her do stuff because like most of the time you're going to be out defensing basically everyone anyway uh but yeah i don't know it it, it really does it, it's curious to me um in any case uh but yeah so this is why uh to some degree i think two dancers on your team would be pretty in, is, is pretty interesting um just just because you know you can't isolate both dancers unless you're running like two Milas in which case I mean it's not like it's impossible uh, I'm sure we've all I'm sure some of us have seen it at some point um, but yeah I think two dancers might be like a pretty good way to go uh, you are sacrificing a lot of like I mean for one like on on this like on like Mirabilis running two dancer two dancers on anima isn't such a big deal because you had those are two um, anima defense units right uh, but like on here I have to get rid of one of my u another unit to run another dancer which is not viable which is not as viable which makes which is what makes um flyer balls on on ar defense uh flyer balls on light season not as good um mirabilis really saved the, fi the flyer ball for astra or for anima um but yeah like uh what's it called but yeah um flyer balls out here in light season are, are they're a little tricky to say the least, um, and yeah, so that ended um, about as predictably as it could have ended. Uh, so I think all in all, a bit worse for wear this this season in terms of uh, defense success. Um, and again, it comes from like for one, this defense team is a lot lower. I think, and I, and I want to kind of make a point here. I think. While this defense team is weaker, it's also just, like, obviously weaker. Like, you can look at it and be like, oh, that's not as strong. Which, um, it, as we saw last time, um, I, I don't think it's a, too much of a stretch to say that everybody we fought last... Well, I think there was one or two, right? But most of the people we fought last time and, and ended up losing to were all bringing their A game. You know what I mean? Like, they were properly executed Leafs, you know, properly executed uh, bikes, um... And 
properly executed baits, um, you know, there. So to me, it looked like everybody who, every match we ended up finding last time, well, not every, but most of them, ones we found last time were all very, almost surgical, right? Like they, they had to really think about it and they took steps to breaking down the team and beating the team itself. Where here, a lot of these are just like, I'm losing to people who are who are barely trying, essentially is what the point I want to make here is, um, I'm losing to a lot of people who are just kind of just they threw some units at the TV at the at the you know at my team and we're like okay we'll see how that goes, um, so yeah that that's kind of a point that I wanted to make was I do feel better about the other team even though um, I ended up losing quite a bit considering uh, what I was like you know considering what my hopes were for it um, but I do enjoy like th like last season the defenses that I the the offenses that I ended up facing on defense were some of the best offenses I've seen, like, just ever playing this game. Um, because, you know, I'll, I, again, I'll look at, like, the, the replays and I'll, very often, and then you see that just, they're just like, you know, it's like, oh, this guy had, like, a plus 10, whatever, like, Sophia's, or just, just like, a random unit, where it's like, okay, I could see a strategy here, but there's, there's just, like, too much, um, I guess, nonsense going on. Um, and, I you know, a lot of times back then, uh, I ended up losing... And kind of like here, right? I end up losing not necessarily because someone really like sat down and thought through my team. I end up losing a lot of times because the team isn't very good, and that that's been the history of my uh, defense team. So I'm kind of happy uh, at the comparison between these two seasons. That um, my anima season, which was last season, I'm losing to things where it's like basically that person who beat me there probably would have beat like 99% of people. Like they took the time to sit there and be like, okay, what's the strategy? Now, right, bike is just kind of like, he's kind of simple, right? There's not a whole lot of strategy to bike, but like the fact that they had a bike built and and they they valued it enough to be like, okay, this is a this is a strategy I'm keeping, and I'll probably have they probably have other ones, um, but the fact that I'm lo that I'm losing to you know strong teams on offense, on the other one is 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 good. I like I like that, um, you know, I'm I'm end up finding these people these more uh, solid, more well constructed teams. We're here. Um, half my loss, my losses come from like just random mishmash of teams, um, but yeah. So uh, that's it for today's um, video. Hopefully, something was extrapolated. Um, eventually, I will make my anima team, my light season team, or the dark light and dark season team uh, mirror my other team. But there's a lot more to work through, like I said, because for one, I can't run. Um, like for one, like my my dancers are different, and two, um, there's there's Mila to consider, and and there's a lot, there's just like enough difference between the two seasons that making them both exactly the same uh, isn't exactly the the ideal solution. Um, but yeah, so probably today's Monday, so probably tomorrow I'm gonna have the uh, Aether Raids offense video uploaded. I'm about to go do that right now. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I guess good luck on anybody else's uh, defenses out there. Uh, what are we looking at next season? Uh, Bright Shine. Uh, is that Bright Shine? Yeah, Bright Shine. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. Um, I've been having a pretty good uh, offense run, considering that Air is up there, uh, which means I can run two Peonies, and, and we'll see that today. I think I've, like, it was a light season before this, and I ran two Peonies there, and it's it's... It's so good that I really need to like build a team like that for all seasons. Just having two peonies, um, uh, yeah. So I didn't, I didn't before. I was kind of thinking about it, but I, I didn't really have the motivation to. I just kind of kept my other teams. But now that uh, I've seen, I've seen the truth. Uh, I really got to get one, one or one or two teams going that have two peonies on them because it's, it's very strong. Um, let you PVE for a while and then CC vantage whatever's left over. Uh, but yeah. Um, unfortunately, it kind of sucks for me because I don't have any of these units other than, like, her. So she's just going to be kind of dead weight. I mean, she's kind of useful. Um, not going to be wrong, but she's not as, like, she's not built enough to really do as much as I want her to do. Uh, at least, not, especially not as much as, like, Air can do. Like, Air has been the Ash just, uh, well, well, we'll see, um, in the videos later today when I, um, when I end up doing my attacks and all that. And we'll see how, how useful she is. Uh, I might have a video talking about hell and some of the new um, some of the new stuff we have in terms of flyer balls, like flyer skills, like dive bomb and and her and all this other stuff. 
Oh, but that might be a little bit later. I mean, at this point, it's already too late, right? Because her banner's gone. But um, yeah, I, I want to talk about how that changes the flyer ball and how that gives us more stuff and how my, that might take stuff as well as like hardy bearing or not hardy bearing. Um, whatever that um, guard bearing thing is. Um, yeah, it's guard bearing. Um, but yeah, talking about some of the new additions that we have to flyer balls because for a, for a long time, flyers have not been updated because they were already so strong as it was that giving them little uh, creeps of power is, is very dangerous. Um, but recently we've been getting a decent amount of interesting stuff. So, um, I'll probably talk about that. It doesn't make my flyer ball outdated necessarily. I mean, my, you know, some might argue that my flyer ball is already outdated. Um, but it does give you more interesting things to think about and, and what you might want to add to your flyer ball. But, uh, yeah, so like I said, that'll probably be later, uh, some other time, maybe later this week or something. Um, maybe Thursday. Yeah, I feel like I'll probably do that on Thursday. Oh, uh, yeah, so that'll be it. Uh, again, finally, for the final time, that's all.